I want to start this recipe by saying that if you're on a strict diet, there's nothing wrong with following these steps with some nice beef bone broth and salt only. You don't have to have all these extra ingredients for a tasty outcome. Just letting all my carnivore folks know that I'm still thinking about you and I do love you. For this smoked barbacoa, we will be going through a fair amount of ingredients. And I'll start off with about five cloves of garlic. Simply smash them and get them finely chopped. Place this into a bowl and then we can move on to our chipotles and adobo sauce. To be honest, I enjoy the adobo sauce more than the chipotles themselves, but the peppers add a nice smoky flavor and a little heat. Feel free to strain the sauce from the peppers and use that only if you want to skip the bulk of the heat. For my recipe, I decided to go with three of the peppers with most of the sauce from the can. Give them the same smash and chop treatment like you did the garlic and toss that into your bowl. Next up, we need a little lime. We want to extract We want to extract as much juice and information as possible from this little guy, so we need to put some pressure on him. Where is the joker hiding? Cut it in half and then squeeze it into the bowl. Go ahead and throw the whole lime carcass in as well. Now, these roasted green chilies are an optional ingredient in my opinion. However, they were sitting right next to the chipotles and I couldn't resist grabbing them as well. Throw an entire four ounce jar into the slot bowl of delicious flavors. Now we need to spice it up with some cumin. About a half teaspoon should be enough. Some oregano leaves in the amount of a quarter teaspoon. Some spice it, onion powder, in the amount of a half teaspoon. And finally some salt. Since I had this S&P blend left over from earlier, I use that, about a half teaspoon. The final step to finish off this zesty bowl is two cups of beef stock. I'm using watered down beef base here, which is just salty already. Give, give your mixture a taste for salt and adjust accordingly after adding your stock. I made a mistake by thinking that five bay leaves would be okay, but learn from me and go with about two instead. Give this a stir and set it aside. Now we can finally present the star of the show, 3.3 pounds of chuck roast. Give it the inaugural slap and then we can start to break it down into smaller pieces. All we really need to do is cut this into manageable portions. After your beef is cut up, place a pan over medium high heat. Since I'm using an aluminum pan, I'm gonna add just a touch of olive oil to keep things from sticking. Now put the meat in the pan in small batches to keep it from steaming. All we're trying to do here is get some nice fond. Once you get some color on all sides like this, move it to some sort of heat resistant dish. Repeat this until all of your meat is nicely brown and there's a substantial buildup of fond. Oh yeah, that's that good shit. Remember that sauce we made earlier? If you don't, please go get checked out by a physician. I'm worried about you. Pour the sauce into the pan and begin to scrape the bottom to release the fond. We also want this to come to a light simmer before pouring it on top of the beef. Now it's time to take this out to the old smoky boy. I'm going to be smoking this over hickory low and slow, or about 225 degrees for two hours. To ensure all of it is smoked well, I will be turning the meat inside the pan every 30 minutes. After two hours, it smells amazing and the sauce is light in color a bit. Now cover this with a piece of parchment paper and some foil, and then place it into an oven or back into your smoker at 300 degrees Fahrenheit for about 45 more minutes or until it's fall apart tender. And after patiently waiting, this is what we're left with. Some of my larger chunks weren't quite falling completely apart, and I was running out of time at the restaurant, so I shredded what I could and chopped the rest. And let me tell you, this shit is good enough to make some tacos with. Simply add about two ounces of sharp cheddar to a nonstick surface that's set to medium heat. You may have to coax it into a perfect circle. Place a small handful of your meat on half the cheese and then fold it over. Let it cook with the meat inside for maybe two minutes in total, ensuring to flip it once. Now, I'm usually hypercritical about the food I cook, but this is one of those rare occasions where I know I hit the nail directly in its stupid head. These are rich, juicy, and packed with flavor from the smoke, garlic, spices, and chilies. I don't think anyone would be upset about these tacos ever. Smokestack. So smoky, you'd swear your house was on fire. Carnivore Companion. Turn ordinary meats into extraordinary feasts. Link below.